Rick, I want to start with something we heard right at the top of that. Uh, he said uh, it's absurd that the 2% uh, target is appropriate for all seasons and all times uh, in terms of inflation targets. What, what's your view on that? Well, I think uh, A plus or in lieu of the Olympics, a 10. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I've been saying the same things for years, as has Ira Harris and many of my sources. It makes no sense. First of all, the world isn't calibrated the same between Europe, Japan, the U.S., and to think there's so similarities or such high correlations as to what central banks bogey is for inflation. It's so arbitrary. And when you listen to Janet Yellen talk about Verizon, or as he brought up, which I used in my exchange today, the article about Amazon and people shopping. Listen, Milton Friedman be rolling in his grave. Listen, those aren't monetary phenomenons. And what central banks are doing with this arbitrary 2% really I, I think is just horrible. I think we should get that pillar and destroy it completely and the notion of lower prices, view it like Peter Bookvar does, these are cost of living adjustments. Maybe we should think of a bigger swath of the American public, indeed the global public with regard to pricing versus the fat cats out of all these buildings and big assets, which is really where the deflationary pressure hits hardest. Sarge, what's interesting as well, though, is that he didn't have a great year trading the macro. So, you know, the, the, this trade has been going against him, so to speak, and he was quite candid about that. So whether it's that or Bitcoin, it's, it, timing is everything, right? I mean, what choices do investors have if, they, if it comes down to kind of, OK, either I'm going to justify the, the stock market valuations differently or where do I go? Well, you mentioned stock market valuations. Uh, I believe that we will be drawing liquidity from the marketplace going forward, okay? The, the Fed roll-off of the balance sheet will probably start being negative as far as liquidity goes but sometime around April. The ECB and the BOJ are finally going to have to move towards a tightening stance. The Fed, to go against Rick and, and Mr. Druckenmiller, didn't really respect that 2% target. They've been moving the Fed funds rate higher now for two years. So I hate to defend the Fed because I'm not usually their ally. But they have, they have realized that 2% wasn't really the target. It's only a target in, hey, we're going to go 16 and 0 this year if you're Bill Belichick. You know, it's, not, it's not a realistic target. And they reacted accordingly. So I do think that, I don't think that's really something that to trade off of. And I, I think valuations for stocks will probably move from 19 and a half down to 16 or 17. And we're going to have to depend on expansion Is that of earnings. Because earnings expand the past tax reform. Right. So, well, yeah. well, we're looking at 11 percent earnings growth for next year without tax reform. Yeah. You give me tax reform and the same monetary conditions, we would have an explosive number, which they probably don't want to allow. Jim, do you think one of the reasons Bitcoin has been going up is because of monetary printing and QE? And when rates go up, is that genuinely a really big risk for something that does have some structural factors behind it, too? I think you have to look at sort of what's going on more broadly. So the, you know, with QE, we've printed all this money. The idea was we'd simulate the real economy. All we've done is simulated financial assets. And as Drunken Miller was saying, you know, art and real estate and all these, all, all of these assets have become very expensive. But wages haven't gone up. The cost of, you know, goods and services you get from Walmart and Amazon Amazon haven't gone up. And so we're not actually seeing that money make it into the real economy. I think what we're starting to see is that, and, and you know, I think Bitcoin's a perfect example. So you withdraw liquidity, you're going to see a decline in luxury real estate prices, you're going to decline in art prices, decline in equity prices, bond prices, and Bitcoin. But I think ultimately what happens is through the wealth effect, through that money getting into the economy, we're going to actually see that wage push inflation. We're going to see prices go up at Walmart, at the supermarkets, and that's going to be what brings this party to an end. And Jim, just quickly as well on European credit, because there was an interesting comment in there from, from Mr. Druckenmiller. I mean, we've got the German 10-year back at 0.3 percent spreads incredibly tight between uh, government bonds and corporate credit in Europe. Is that a bubble at the moment? It certainly looks like a great opportunity to, to play the carry trade in the U.S., right? If I'm a European investor, I can short euros and buy dollars. I think dollars probably going stronger against the euro over the next 12 to 24 months based on the way the U.S. economy is growing and based on the probability that I think we're going to have some surprise rate hikes next year in 18 that people don't see coming uh, because of greater inflationary pressures. So I, I think it probably is a bubble in that sense that you'll see some pressure on the euro and some pressure on European assets generally. And uh, I, I don't think that, th that, that the rate divergence between the U.S. and Europe is going to be allowed to last uh, much longer. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.